Okay, so we've got a fault. I found out whether or not this works uh, as the battery didn't. So what I'm going to do is, uh, now that the battery's been charged up a bit, I'm just going to use the, the battery to um, uh, connect this up and hopefully just see this powering on uh, and uh, without any faults or anything and hopefully that be enough just to to prove that it works um, so what I've done for the moment is I've completely bypassed the BMS by um, joining the two ends of the negatives uh, the one that comes from the battery and normally goes into the BMS board and then comes out of the BMS board and into the a negative terminal I've just basically directly connected the negative terminal to that one so the BMS is not even involved now so it just means that these uh, plugs will be live so that I can use these connectors that are with it to to test whether that works um, but um, there's some big capacitors in here so before I connect it up I need to uh, pre-charge them up using some resistors just uh, otherwise there'll be a big jolt uh, as as there'll be a huge inrush current, so I'll charge it up uh, with the um, with this little big bunch of resistors I've got here, just to uh, pre-charge the caps, and then and then uh, I should be able to push the plug on there, and and hopefully that will work. So uh, I'm going to try that now, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, well it seems like get that to focus in on there. Yeah. It seems like it's working. It does uh, not have any of the other bits uh, connected to it yet, so um, uh, it's just sitting there in thingy mode. But it does power up. That's the main thing. So I think I think that's probably okay. I bought this um, USB to um, RJ11. Uh, basically RS232 serial port connector so that I can connect my laptop to the um, to the console port here on the battery um, so um, and I've also got this uh, battery view software from Pylon Tech so I need to connect the cable up to the battery. Uh, obviously the BMS needs to be powered. So what I might do is, because I don't want to fiddle with this one until I know it's going to work, I'm going to go and plug it into one of my other batteries. Uh, and, and just until I can get the readings up on the screen there. So, um, yeah, uh, I need to plug this in and see if I can get it to talk to the battery. Um, uh, and then hopefully we can then, uh, once I've got it talking to a battery, I can uh, reconnect up the BMS to give it power uh, and then plug the console into here and finally get a reading uh, from the battery to tell me what it thinks is the fault. So I'm going to try that now. Well, I've tried a few times and it, it just won't connect. It says uh, it's timed out. So. The signal's obviously not getting through. So having a look in the Pylon Tech manual for the US 2000, it says that the serial port should be uh, um, configured like this. So you should have ground on either of the two outside pins and then pin 2 should be the transmit line and pin 3 should be the receive, uh, receiver line. So. Um, Looking at the cable that I bought from Amazon, it seems to suggest here that it's got the two outer pins as ground, which is correct, um, but it's got, uh, so that's the pin, the pin um, looking at the 
connector from the bottom, the pin um, on the right is the RX pin. And looking at this as if the cable was going to plug in, uh, looking at it from the bottom, like that. So that's the way it is in the diagram. It would be that pin on the right of the two at the center. So then if I put it back to there, which is how it would plug in, that pin will be pin number two. So pin number two should be TX. Uh, and on here, it seems to suggest that pin number two is RX. Now, normally, the what the transmit line on one device has to be the receive line on the other device and vice versa. Uh, otherwise, um, the receiver won't hear the transmitter when it transmits. So I'm wondering if uh, this uh, cable I've bought is wired backwards for um, uh, for to, you know for it to work with this pylon tech battery. So what I might need to do is cut the cable and uh, put a crossover in the middle so that the transmit and receive pins are, uh, are flipped over. The ground pins are both correct. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut this in half and strip back the cable um, and then um, solder in a couple of um, solder in a couple of these sort of cables um, with the pins on them on either side so that I can effectively plug you know one pin straight into the other and then I could you know if I had the, the, the transmit and receive pins here I could I could have the transmit one plug over into the receive one and the receive one plug over into the transmit one like that um, and then that way I can try and uh, play around with the cables because unfortunately I, although I've got a crimping tool I don't have RJ11 connectors so um, I can't afford to just cut this end off and, and re-put a new end on there I'd have to go and get some RJ11 connectors which I don't have I've only got like the standard Ethernet cable ones which are a bit wider so uh, so yeah, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut the cable and, and solder in some of these so that I can do it, and then uh, I'll try again and see if that works. Right. So I've soldered these um, uh, cables in the middle of the uh, RS232 cable so that I can connect all the light colours up to the same colour. So white goes to white, etc. Blue goes to blue. But then in the middle, which is the red and the green, I've got them switched over to so the red. Uh, you can see those connected to the green, and the green uh, is connected to the on the back there is connected to the red. So that should cross over the RX and TX. Uh, so I'm going to go and try this now uh, again with the battery software and see if I can read one of my normal batteries and then uh, if it works then I can plug it into the one over here into this one and see what it says that worked which is good so it was obviously just that the um, TX and RX were the wrong way around um, but now I've got a fully adjustable cable so that I can I can make any line equal to any other line so that's quite good but anyway, it works. So um, this is what uh, Battery View produced when I just connected it to one of my good batteries. So you can see it's filled in all the values and all the cell values down the bottom there. Uh, so that one was all good. Um, but as it works now, um, I need to uh, connect it up to this one and see what the BMS says. So before I do that, I need to get power back to the BMS. So I need to remove this little bridge device that I put in there and reconnect them to these two uh, connectors here so it powers back up the board again. So I'll do that, um, plug it in and then let's see what we get. Let's plug it in. Power it on. Okay, we've got power. Um, six. Mm. 
what? I haven't done anything yet. And suddenly it says the battery is working. Okay. I did put it on to charge up to full. Maybe maybe a full charge is what's done it, but let's see what happens if I start the scan. Okay. Oh well, so it's working. Um we have got a cell high voltage here, but that's probably where I've charged it up um, to full. Uh, because when I originally turned the pack on, I would balanced all of them exactly, so they were all um, at the right level and none of them were too high. So now we've got... What have we got? 3.38, 3.34, 3.35, 3.36, 3.37, 3.38, 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42, 3.43, 3.44, 3.45, 3.46, 3.47, 3.48, 3.49, 3.50, 3.51, 3.
all the cells are pretty close in value which is excellent and the um, battery is now reporting its capacity in amp hours as 45.3 well these batteries are supposedly 50 amp hours when they're brand new um, so considering how many years old this is um, I think uh, 45 is 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 uh, really really good so uh, that I believe is uh, is a win all round. So um, yeah, it seems to be up and running and working absolutely perfectly now. So uh, very happy with that. Okay, so I got it working, which is fantastic. Well, I say I got it working. I didn't actually uh, have to interrogate the BMS for the fault at all. Uh, it seems as though um, a full charge up to the top voltage was needed to somehow trigger the BMS to uh, decide that it was going to restart and reset um, and uh, I'd, I'd, since I charged it up with the BMS disconnected I obviously hadn't tried that up until this point um, I just charged it up uh, to allow me to test out the uh, inverter that I bought with, with, with the battery um, and um, and so I hadn't I hadn't bothered to reconnect the BMS because if I'd have done that, then the the ports at the front wouldn't have worked. So so yeah, uh, it seems as though uh, yeah, full charge was what was required to get it to reset. But since then, uh, it's been absolutely fine. It's been running now for a few days. I've been keeping an eye on the voltages and everything. It seems absolutely fine. Um, it's uh, a welcome addition to my stack, and obviously. Um, the inverter that I bought with it I've, I've shown that that worked as well which is really good so although at first it seemed um, like um, I, I may have bought a bit of a, a bit of a dud uh, it all worked out all right in the end so that's really good um, but yeah okay that's great I hope you found that a uh, useful video um, I found the whole process very interesting very useful um, I think I'm going to work on a, a system now to uh, permanently have the uh, console port connected to either my Raspberry Pi or to a little Arduino uh, and get it to send out the values over MQTT or something like that and then I'll incorporate it into the rest of my system uh, and then I can sort of keep track of the voltages of all the individual cells which is what I do uh, with my homemade ones that are in my power shed. So, uh, long term it allows me to see which ones are starting to get weak compared to the others but um, uh, ha being able to sort of query the battery for um, its uh, its rated capacity or what it, it thinks is its capacity uh, will also be really useful because over the years I can then plot a graph to see how, how it degrades over time um, and that um, yeah I think that would be really useful and in, uh, informative data uh, and other people would find that interesting uh, to uh, see um, how, just how quickly these batteries degrade um, but yeah um, yeah as I say that's it so uh, hope you enjoy the video and uh, thanks everyone for watching please do like comment share subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video cheers